Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. We want them infected. Those are the words of a top Trump appointee directing the federal government to pursue an intentional strategy from the top down to get as many Americans as sick as possible in an attempt at so-called herd immunity. It's a strategy we have seen unfold before our eyes. We've talked about it here on the show. It's been apparent to all of us reporting on this and watching. But we now have the smoking gun evidence, emails obtained by Politico, in which the very people at the center of this say what exactly they were doing, that they wanted people to get the virus. And this is the result. the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. last night. Its bell tolling 300 times, one ring of the bell for every thousand Americans as we pass the 300,000 death toll. According to the COVID pr tracking project, we lost another 3,400 Americans that have died since roughly when those bells rang just last night, and that is a New Dealy record. We've never seen it before. No country has 3,400 Americans lost to the virus in just the last 24 hours. And it did not have to be this bad. We have the world's worst aggregate death toll by far, and not because of our size. There are bigger countries like China and India, of course. No, the U.S. accounts for around 4% of the world's population, but we have nearly 19% of the world's COVID deaths. But the thing to understand about that is it is not an accident, and it is not bungling. Donald Trump, as his administration, as backed by Republicans in his party, in Congress, explicitly pursued a strategy that would lead to more Americans getting sick and more Americans dying. And they did this despite the fact they kept denying they were pursuing the so-called herd immunity approach. It was always clear they were. Trump put Scott Atlas, a right-wing radiologist uh, from a conservative think tank, in charge of the COVID response. And he did that because he saw Atlas on TV when Atlas went on Trump's favorite TV shows and said things like the following, quote, when you isolate everyone, including all the healthy people, you're prolonging the problem because you're preventing population immunity. See that word there? Immunity. Trump would later talk about the herd. Now, it was always apparent how reckless and dangerous the herd immunity strategy was, because the one place that openly tried it, in good faith, I think they thought it was the best way to do it, was Sweden. And it became clear pretty quickly it was a catastrophe. Sweden had a far, far higher death toll than its neighbors. The elderly, folks in long-term care facilities, particularly hard hit. And the Swedish government was then forced to abandon its failing strategy quite publicly and impose new restrictions. The evidence is clear. You either suppress the virus and you get low levels of cases and low levels of deaths, or you don't and you get high levels of cases and high levels of deaths. There is literally nowhere in the world, nowhere, that has tons of cases and lots of young people getting it who don't end up passing it to people who are immunocompromised and elderly people and people in nursing homes. That's how this virus works. It's what the public experts said from the beginning. The virus spreads. When young people started going back to colleges, we knew that it was only a matter of time until the virus got out to the rest of the community. And as the New York Times reported, though young people do have indeed less risk, deaths rose fast in college towns when they returned to campus. Again, all of this was as predictable as night following day. There has always been an ironclad correlation between cases and deaths, even as the fatality rate has indeed fallen. But here's what one Trump appointee was saying when colleges closed. Listen to this, quote, we essentially took off the battlefield the most potent weapon we had. Younger, healthy people, children, teens, young people who we need to fastly infect themselves, spread it around. Think about that for a second. This is a Trump administration official at HHS 
directing COVID response, expressing that he was upset that fewer people would get the virus and get sick. Think about this. It is like a general rooting for casualties among his own troops. Now, the person who wrote those words, you should know his name. His name was Paul Alexander. He's a former part-time assistant professor at a university in Canada who was appointed to the Department of Health and Human Services. Now, Paul Alexander and this gentleman, Michael Caputo, you should also know his name and his face, both of those individuals were installed specifically to be Donald Trump's eyes and ears at HHS, the White House's eyes and ears, and to override the science when it was politically advantageous to do so. And that pair interfered with CDC reports on COVID, and they pushed back against anything they thought would undermine Trump's message that, we're back, baby, get out there. And it wasn't just them. New York Times has a new report out in which Trump appointees described the crushing of the CDC by the administration, one saying, quote, damage has been done to the CDC that will take years to undo. Among those interfering in the agency were Kellyanne Conway and Ivanka Trump, you know, just sending their ideas about once in a century pandemic management. So it, this wasn't just a couple of political hacks mouthing off in emails. No, this was a concerted, coordinated strategy from the president, Donald Trump, down. The administration reaching into control and override the actual experts in infectious diseases at the most preeminent public health institution in the world, or at least it used to be until he broke it. The simple truth of the last nine months sounds extreme. It sounds almost hysterical when you say it, but it is what it is. And here it is. Donald Trump and our government under his leadership explicitly pursued a strategy to spread the virus, to get more people sick. They took the side of COVID. They had the same aims as the virus. They were, as I said before, objectively pro-COVID, and they are to this day. And not because they were incompetent, even though they are, but because they actively, affirmatively chose that path. Because through a combination of idiocy and cynicism, they thought that path, aligning with the virus to infect as many people as possible, would be best for Donald Trump's reelection. And the deliberate, intentional decisions that Donald Trump and Alexander and Caputo and all of them took have gotten tens, actually probably hundreds of thousands Americans killed unnecessarily. We are now 35 days from the end of the Trump administration. We lost 3,400 people today and there will be more we lose tomorrow and the day after. We are at the beginning of writing the history of Donald Trump's stewardship of this pandemic. And the epitaph scrawled across this era should be those four words. We want them infected. Do you think herd immunity is a viable strategy for the U.S. to adopt? Yeah, you know, Dan, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'll tell you exactly how I feel about that. That, again, is another trap, because when you talk about the Barrington, the Great Barrington Declaration, what they say in there uh, and then what is implied are two different things. They say, A, we need to protect the vulnerable. I totally agree with that. No problem. That's apple pie and motherhood. The other thing is that you don't want to lock down or close down the country. I certainly agree with that. I just said that. But in there is the implication that if you just let anybody get and, and everybody get infected, don't wear masks, let children get infected, let everybody get infected, and just protect the vulnerable, like being really careful in nursing homes and places like that. That doesn't work because in our community, there's maybe a third of the population, depending upon how you figure it, that are vulnerable and would be prone to getting serious complications from COVID-19 disease. It is impossible and we've never protected those people in the community. They're not in nursing homes where you can do things in nursing homes. You have the elderly, obese people, people with underlying conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and other conditions. If you let infections rip, as it were, and say, let everybody get infected that's gonna be able to be getting infected, and then we'll have herd immunity, Quite frankly, that is nonsense. And anybody who knows anything about epidemiology will tell you that that is nonsense and very dangerous. Because what will happen is that if you do that, 
by the time you get to herd immunity, you will have killed a lot of people that would have been avoidable. So, I mean, you've got, I mean, no, there is a certain core group of people that are saying that, but talk at the standard people throughout the country who understand infectious diseases and understand epidemiology, with the exception of the few that you know who we're talking about, they would all vehemently disagree with this idea of just letting everybody getting infected and don't worry about it. You know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat. It's you said it was going to go in, away in it's April. You said when it warmed up in April. I said it's going away, and it is going away. You're going to lose a number of people to the flu, but you're going to lose more people by putting a country into a massive recession. A few weeks ago, you say this was just like a flu. What have you learned? I didn't say two weeks ago it was a flu. Are you saying that the administration is requiring these industries to, to create these products or just asking? Just you know, so far we haven't had to. You just said that you haven't had to require companies to up their production of medical supplies. But you said last night you invoked but the I DPA. Before. I don't believe you need 40,000 or 30,000 ventilators. You said New York might need I, that I might not need 30,000. You said it on I Sean Hannity's Fox News. You said you know, that why you don't, might why don't you some, people act? Let, let me ask you. You said why some don't state, you act why don't you act in a little more positive? It's always trying to my get question. you. With the virus costing over a thousand American lives per day, President Trump continues to maintain the pandemic is under control. Most recently in an interview on HBO. Well, What's Mr. your President? definition of control? Yeah. Under the it's giving them a false sense right of security. Now, I think it's under control. I'll tell you what. How? A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. December 18, 2020, Donald Trump, the loyalist he hired, some of the Republican Party are responsible for the intentional infection of millions of Americans and others worldwide traveling infected. Today's death toll is 320,845 American men, women, and children. It's called genocide.